What's going on, YouTube? Find it's your boy Tony two times, and we back with another episode of Hood Tales, man. Before I start, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe if you ain't already. Tonight, we're going to take it to New Orleans and talk about a Central City kingpin named Telly Hankton and his organization. Let's get right into it. It was June 7, 2016, when Telly Hankton, known as New Orleans' most dangerous criminal, as one of four co defendants of a federal racketeering trial. It took the judge 90 minutes to finish reading out loud for George the 24 count indictment. The other two co defendants were Hankton's alleged hitman, Walter Porter, and his cousin Andre, and associate Kevin Jackson. The first racketeering count alone detailed 101 overt acts of crime and violence, which prosecutors say Telly allegedly built a $43 million narcotic empire from a Josephine Street sidewalk. The judge repeatedly cautioned jurors that the indictment had allegations and they weren't yet proven, but that didn't sway prosecutors. They were more than happy to have the lengthy document read. As to them, it served as kind of a resume of the man they described as a brutal and unforgiving Central City kingpin. According to prosecutors, the indictment is a long drawn out diary of what they did to control the distribution network, their neighborhood, and even the criminal justice system so they could operate without any fear. Whatever clean slate the four men had, the feds were determined to destroy it. Telly, who had turned 40 at that time, was already serving a life sentence for a 2008 hit on a man named Darnell Stewart. Telly said I'm bald, dressed in a light blue suit, white shirt, and dark blue tie. He rarely took his eye off the judge that day. Outside of Telly and the other co-defendants, the indictment listed a total of 12 accused co-conspirators. Here are some of the most crucial allegations against Telly and his alleged crew. From 94 to 97, Telly and his cousin Thomas allegedly began buying girl by the kilo. From 98 to 2003, Telly allegedly begins buying five to six kilos of girl every two weeks from a plug in New Orleans. In March 1999, two men, possibly brothers, who were allegedly associated with Telly, shoot TB within the territory of the enterprise. A little over a year later, Telly allegedly waxed his cousin Frank over missing money and narcotics that he allegedly was storing for Telly. What's crazy is that Frank blamed his own daughter, who was taken out in cold blood along with a man named Calvin less than a month later. Four years go by when Telly allegedly takes out a man named Brian and two other known individuals. A year later, a man named G. Jackson asks an associate to take out Darnell Stewart. Telly allegedly gives a blicky to an associate while he was at his mom's house. Within just minutes, the associate allegedly hit Brian again. Darnell and a known individual in 2007, Telly and family members shot at Darnell again and Jay Reed allegedly. They also hit a known individual. Eight months later, Telly allegedly shoots at Darnell again and allegedly shoots Jay Reed. Then a few months later, in May 2008, Telly and Andre Hankton was allegedly involved in the gun battle with Darnell Stewart on Claiborne Avenue. Darnell crashed his car and tried to run. Andre allegedly hits him with his car. Supposedly, Telly shoots and takes out Darnell at this point. During the next following weeks, F. A. Shirley Hankton and others used properties to secure a $1 million bond for Telly. In 2009, things get even more heated. Shirley allegedly gave some cashier's checks to pay for Telly's attorney. In June of that year, Telly, Walter, and Kevin whacked J. Reed allegedly. Court documents say Kevin allegedly pays Walter at least 10 G's for the hit. The following month, Walter allegedly executes her son Williams, an associate of J. Reed who supposedly witnessed J. Reed's takedown. Walter, the alleged hitman, was allegedly paid for this hit as well. Later that year, Telly and his associate were being held in the Orleans Parish Jail. Allegedly, they put out a hit on Jay Matthews, a key witness to the Darnell Stewart hit. Fast forward a year later, the group's hitman hit up Jay Matthews at his home in Eastern New Orleans. He was allegedly paid 10 racks or more. In 2011, that's when it seemed like everything came to a head. Two women were set to testify in Telly's case. A woman named Nathody S. pays one of the women allegedly to testify falsely to Telly's murder trial. In July 2011, at the trial, the women pr pressured themselves. A few months later, Walter Porter 
the alleged hitman executes Curtis Matthews, brother of Jay Matthews. The following month, Shirley Hankton is accused of lying to the grand jury. These are just a few of the crucial allegations that were presented in court that day. While Telly was unbothered and staring intently at the judge, Walter Porter not so much. Porter was said to serve as Hankton's go-to assassin. He was more animated, according to reports. Porter sat adjacent to Telly at the defense table. As Telly Hankton's attorney gave the opening statement and suggested her client was being unfairly prosecuted and smeared by association with a proven blicky carrying gang member such as Porter, when the attorney said that, the alleged hitman could not contain itself. Porter yelled objection, man, because that's not only what people have said. Porter's attorney struggled to contain his outburst, and the judge threatened to remove him from the courtroom. Porter himself was also serving a life sentence after convicted in an unrelated case. The government had to convince jurors that Hankton and his associate created a pattern of illegal behavior and acts aimed at furthering the growth and power of an organization or criminal enterprise. Those alleged acts included distribution of large qualities of girl, crack, smack, and grass from 96 to 2012, hits and attempted hits, money laundering, and pre-jewelry. However, Telly's attorney suggested that the feds and NOPD had their client and network of cousins and friends all wrong. Telly's attorney said that the government was trying to paint her client as some kind of monster. She said, I'm not going to sit here and tell you he's no saint, but he's not a killer. And it's not an organization, it's a family. Other members of the family included Hankton's mother, Shirley, who pled guilty to her alleged part in the indictment. Telly and, the alleged, and three other alleged co-defendants in June 2016 trial was the final four of 13 defendants. The prosecution promised some of the people closest to Telly and Porter would be among the ones testifying against the four defendants. Prosecutors said that a lot of them had pled guilty and was willing to admit what they did, but also willing to tell about other alleged crimes the four men committed. Because they were people who knew best what happened in the streets at the time, Telly's attorney begged jurors to be cautious of the testimonies they were about to hear during the trial especially if it was coming from people that hope to see lighter sentences and it's changed for their cooperation. The defense attorneys also had planned to use discredited former NOPD detective in an effort to exonerate Telly. The disgrace also was Desmond Pratt, who at the time was serving a three-year sentence after being convicted in 2014 of some unspeakable acts with a juvenile. He was a figure that linked Telly Hankton to a handful of alleged hits and shootings. His alleged dirty police work caused problems in both state and federal cases. Some of the witnesses that had worked with him later claimed Pratt coerced them to identify Telly Hankton and family members as people that was doing the crimes. Pratt was then a target of an internal civil rights investigation. The former detective invoked his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination and refused to testify at Telly's pretrial, but eventually the judge granted a request by Hankton and ordered Pratt bought from his cell to testify at the trial that took place in June 2016. Three weeks later, the federal trial that ended with Telly Hankton being convicted of three counts of murder and aid of racketeering, his alleged number one hitman Walter Porter was convicted on three federal murder charges as well. Later that year, both was given life sentences. Andre Hankton and Kevin Jackson were both given life sentences as well. Things didn't end there though. The fallout from the trials were immediate. When one of Hankton's alleged crew members who testified was taken out allegedly after testifying. Today, Telly Hankton is doing his time at Louisiana State Penitentiary, a repurposed slave plantation situated in West Valencia Parish. The former bloodiest prison of the South is where Telly Hankton is set to spend the rest of his life. So y'all know my saying, we got to succeed, not to fail. So we won't be just another hood tale. Man, it's a crazy story. Y'all be sure to like, comment, share. If you're new to the fam, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Let me know who y'all want to see next. I love y'all fam. I'm out.